Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's going to have a great Taco Tuesday this morning. Um, what's interesting to me, shout out to the mailman, uh, Game Time Brian. Brian uh, texted me this morning because he's uh, talking about what Sean and RJ were talking about with Mike McCarthy being fed up and um, with the situation. And I think maybe we might try and do something with this this evening, a uh, point counterpoint on it. But for me, it's it's look, it's silly. First of all, it's silly season. It's silly season. There's not much going on. The Cowboys haven't done any contracts and stuff. There's speculation, of course, that the Cowboys are just going to blow it all up and everything else. But, you know, here's my thinking right now, because this is kind of crazy, is we have a season. We have a season in front of us. Regardless of what the Cowboys do, contract-wise or not contract-wise, Mike McCarthy's going to be here. Dak Prescott's going to be here. C.D. Lamb's going to be here. And Micah Parsons going to be here. All of those guys are going to be here. And here's what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. And maybe I'm crazy for thinking this. One, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow because I got today. We are sitting here literally... Just forgetting that we have a whole season with those three guys, excuse me, four guys here. It may end up being that they blow it up. They, they, it may be. It could happen. But you know what? We got no control over it. And instead of us worrying about what might happen, because for all we know, there might be a meteor that comes and hits Earth and kills us all. That might happen, and I hope I'm not now making people worry about, is there a meteor going to be coming to hit us? Because we could sit here in life and say, you know, I I'll give you a great example. Um, I've gotten hooked on, um, I can't remember his name, but it's, it's a uh, YouTube channel where the guy goes all over the world and does all these different foods, you know, that are like, like, like okay, they had literally uh, cow juice soup. That was in Southeast Asia, someplace like that. Um, I saw one yesterday because he was actually in Maryland and Virginia with oysters. And they're sitting there saying that 100 people a year die from oysters eating. And you say, oh, my God, don't eat oysters. Don't eat. They, 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 they could kill you. Okay. Do you know how many people died choking last year? like 7,000. So if we take that same philosophy, don't eat. Eating is the number one cause of choking. If you don't eat, you won't choke. <coughs> right? <coughs> there you go. We could sit here and worry about a million things. A million things. And if you worry about things that you have no control over, you're going to miss out on life. So if it blows up, it blows up. I, I can't, there's nothing, absolutely, positively nothing that I can do to change that. Now, here on the positive side of this, one thing that typically happens with players in contract years are, for whatever reason, it seems like typically that is like, usually like their best seasons. Seriously. Typically, in a contract year, sometimes you get guys that play a lot better. I'll give you an example. Jason Hatcher, when he was playing with us, averaged about three, four sacks a season. His contract year, he averaged 11. Got a nice fat contract to go to Washington and went right back to his three, four a season. If that's the case, if, if it's C.D. Lamb saying, I, you know, I might not be playing for the Cowboys, but I'm going to go ahead and get me a big fat contract, and he goes out there and say he gets 1,800 yards, 140 catches. Okay. Dak Prescott on the last year of his deal, and he says, I want to burn it down. 
and gets 42 touchdown passes, gets the Cowboys record. Gets 4,600 yards passing, gets that record. What you going to do? You can pay me, or maybe not. Guaranteed, guaranteed it would not be a problem to get paid. Especially when you start hearing rumors about Matthew Stafford being done with the Rams because of his, you know, he's 36 years old and, you know, he sneezes and he's got an injury these days. They're sitting there literally talking about, I was reading an article that Aaron Rodgers could end up in L.A. Aaron, what? If you're telling me Sean McVay would have the opportunity to get Dak Prescott if Matthew Stafford was leaving, that's the kind of guy that fits what he does. Be that as it may, I want to play a little bit of Sean and RJ that are talking about this. And I kind of said, I've been talking about this for a couple of days at nauseum. One, it's the guy who's in, you know, knows Mike McCarthy from back covering him when he was with Green Bay Packers. But there's no, to me, there's no meat on the bones on this where it's kind of like, you know, somebody saw Mike McCarthy throw the playbook across the room and say, I'm sick of this shit, you know, turn this desk over. You know, there's nothing like that. And I have to say, this, if he is sick of this shit, I don't see how it could be any worse than how it's been. After speculation, after having 12 and 5 seasons and losing in the playoffs, and, you know, doing things like letting go Cedric Wilson, letting go Amari Cooper for a fifth-round pick. I, I would be kind of fed up with stuff like that when you say, you're taking away my weapons and not replacing him. So are we now saying that he's more fed up now than he was before? I'm sure he's been fed up with the whole situation. But, like I said, did you expect something different when you signed up with the Cowboys? Everybody knows that Jerry Jones... He's the head one in charge, and he likes to uh, put forth his will. But let's listen to him for a little bit here. More on that later in the week. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. Got the entire morning squad here with Sean Sharif, R.J. Choppy, and now our Cowboys insider Bobby Bell to react to a story that kind of got buried a few weeks ago from Ty Dunn. Who is Ty Dunn, Bobby? Uh, Ty is a like long form features writer. Uh, he's solo now. He's gone independent, but he used to write for Bleacher Report. He was a beat writer for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, covering the Packers. He's covered the Bills before. He's his two big stories that he's known for. He wrote for Bleacher Report about the Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy tension. That's where all that stuff came out about. Oh, McCarthy's lazy, and Aaron doesn't like him. Thinks he's doesn't think he's football smart. The massage table story. Yeah, that came from that came from that specific article and then last year he had really blown up again with the story about sean mcdermott talking about how brave the 9-11 hijackers were to the Uh, buffalo bills he's the one who got that story out there okay Okay. well with that being said here is the headline mike mccarthy is reportedly beginning to get fed up with owner jerry jones dunn has heard that mccarthy is doing the best he can some of the people i've talked to quote have said that he's getting fed up with it a little bit. Some that spoke for the article said that they thought it was a mistake for McCarthy to be coaching on the final year of his contract. RJ Choppy, you have had similar thoughts. At least give him a one-year extension, a former Cowboys personnel man said. Mm -hmm. You may not have to give him another five years, but at least extend them out one year and extend out all the coaches one year to give them a level of security that's what i always thought they should have done um you know with a (laughs) look with with players you know there's a theory that you know every basically give them a three-year extension all the time if you think you're going to be there in three years give them a three-year extension or restructure it just because you know you're going to be needing these cap relief while they're still there right if you have a quarterback um and then with a coach you just never want them on the lame duck year you know whatever that may do for having a level of um, Mm -hmm. authority, you've removed that when you allow them to be a lame duck walk your coach. My response to that was, yes, in many instances, I agree. Not with this one. It it would have been so easy to see through it. Everyone was anticipating and waiting for Mike McCarthy to be fired as soon as they got embarrassed by the Packers. 
And if anything, I'd worry about enraging the players I need to extend by giving Mike his deal. And the second point okay. to that is now that we. All right. I've, I've had enough of that. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. And it really just hit me. It really and truly just hit me. Let's say you're in a relationship, okay? And I don't know if you're, you know, one of those people that are vengeful in things when you feel like you're fed up or you haven't been treated fairly and so on. What you want to do is you want to leave in the best situation that you can put yourself in, right? You don't want to just walk out the door and you don't have a place to go. Although in some circumstances, you're better off doing that because it's that bad of a relationship. But here's the thing. <laughs> and this is crazy. If I'm Dak Prescott, who's had Jason Garrett, then Scott Linehan, and then Kellen Moore as play callers, and in one year of being a play caller, you look at, how the offense did. Now, whether you're a Dak Prescott fan or not, I don't want to hear this stuff that the Cowboys have, you know, one of the best offensive lines in football and everything else. Um, you know, Terrence Steele was not great. Biotis was, you know, all right. But nothing, you know, he's not not Kelsey. You had great guards and you had Tyron Smith, who is still good, but not the Tyron Smith that used to throw people with his left arm. You didn't have a running game. Let's be clear here. Tony Pollard got 1,000 yards, but it was not like 1,000 yards back when they had 14 games and things like that. It, it was not good as far as a running game. You had one great wide receiver, and yet you had more touchdown passes than anybody else with one of the fewest interception ratings, and that's Mike McCarthy. And... You know, sometimes when you go to war together, you become best buddies. Could it be, could it be that Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott become a package deal? I'm just saying that if you want to hurt the Cowboys, you go through and you make them, you make them miss you. You know, I always talk about um, when you have you know, that relationship that breaks up and the woman that you used to see, she knows that you and her are going to be at the same place, the same event. You know what she going to do. She going to make you wish you were still with her. She's going to spend extra time on her hair and her makeup. She's going to wear that dress that just kind of goes pow, 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 pow. Pow, 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 Right? And when she gets there and she sees you, she's going to have the biggest smile on her face and twinkle in her eye. She's going to be, you know, a little extra motion. As she walks by, and she's going to say, hey, how you doing? And keep on walking by, and you're going to be like, damn, what was I thinking? <sighs> I wonder what she's wearing under there. And that's what you do as Mike McCarthy. And if you're Mike McCarthy, yeah, <coughs> you do get tired of this. You do get <coughs> fed of it. You do look at this and say, we've been 12 and 5 each of these years where he's been in the way. If only he would give me a couple extra pieces here, we could win it all. Now, I'm going to ask this question here. As we are saying that, of course, Mike McCarthy is the only, the only coach out there that is fed up. 
Do you not think that Nick Sirianni is not fed up after he's been cut off at the knees? Oh, I forgot. Game time Brian said, no, because he's a coward. <laughs> okay. So uh, let, let, you can send the ven venom over his way uh, on that. Um, I just think that it would be poetic justice if Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott, oh, pfft, throw in a C.D. Lamb, said, you know what? Let's go to some place together and continue to work together. You never know. Um, of course, this is one of those times of the year where crazy shit just comes up. And we'll end with Rich Eisen, of course, because everybody's talking about Mike McCarthy fed up. Tyler Dunn of Go Long, which is, I believe, his Go Long. Uh, page, the name of his page. Um, he re reports on uh, the National Football League columnist, quoting unnamed former... Those are, those, are, those are the dangerous Ooh, words, aren't those they? Those are dangerous. I know. Former personnel in, uh, executive with the Cowboys. Okay. Saying, let me get this right. Uh, and the, by the way, the columnist head is, what in the hell are the Dallas Cowboys doing? Is the name of Tyler. Oh, what the hell are the Cowboys doing? I asked myself that multiple times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy what's going on, one former Cowboys personnel says, and it doesn't ever really change. Saying at one point, of McCarthy, Mike McCarthy, head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, he's doing it the best he can. Some of the people I've talked to have said that he's getting fed up with it a little bit. Oh, that's fun. Now, of course, that's the juicy part, an unnamed executive saying he's talking to other people who are saying this of Mike McCarthy, so mm -hmm. it's kind of like... Secondhand uh, information. Well, it's, it's, like it's, it's, like a third, it's, it's a third of a Kevin Bacon. Yeah, you know, right, you're right, too right. removed here. Right. Um, so, but all I will say is that if this is true, if this is true, that he's fed up a little bit, the only words I have in response to that are, can you blame him? <laughs> can you blame a guy who has to go home and look his family in the face and say to them, I, I don't know about next year? on about 2025 i don't know what's going on and if they push back you know anybody at home just in any way you say but but wait a minute i mean you know didn't you win the division last year i mean didn't you like are, aren't you making the playoffs i don't know if they'd ask that question if a veteran of the coaching game because they kind of already know the answer to that question that no results oriented business or whatever but how many head coaches in the nfl go into their final year of a contract not many. I don't recall the last one, quite frankly. And even in Pittsburgh, PA, where it's been a long time mm -hmm. since they've won a playoff game at all, they made sure Tomlin had a three-year deal going into this season. And then there's the question of the quarterback wondering if he's going to get paid, and the wide receiver, and the top pass rusher, yada, yada, yada. We've covered this over and over again. But that is part and parcel of what happens when you go, if you will, all in, like the Dallas Cowboys have done that. So Jerry Jones has got to know that it will make a coach fed up when he doesn't get any contractual roadway after this year. And then the most important players on the team are, are waiting for contracts themselves. And I know some of you out there might be like, well, then guess what? He, sh he should have... Uh, beating the Packers. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yes, this is just beat the such Packers. a wild like sequence little, of events, that man. That little shady smirk you gave me right there when you said that. I don't appreciate that at all. <laughs> well, it's I not that. It. I saw it. It's, this is all the truth. I'm not saying anything wrong. That You know, a, cow, I, a, a, a coach needs to, it needs to ha show results. And players who want to get second and third generationally enriching contracts have to show results. Yeah. Exactly. But the rest of the NFL is like paying guys who have shown results-ish. <laughs> so the Cowboys and, are doing it the right way, Brockman. Or they, right? But if they're doing Hold it, that the, thought. or they're doing it in the way Hold that, thought. that may mm -hmm. ruffle a few feathers now and come home to roost in the season when things begin to break down eventually. And we will see. We will see for sure. We shall see for sure. As always, good people, I appreciate you guys. 
And I can't wait till training camp opens up literally, literally a month from today. I'm Mark Holmes. I appreciate you guys. And hopefully all your taco dreams come true. Peace.